This is the Discovery Files podcast from the U.S. National Science Foundation. Tattoos have been a part of human culture for a very long time, with examples having been found in mummies dating back over 5,000 years. And while tattoos have become ubiquitous in modern times, their use is still primarily decorative. But what if a tattoo could help diagnose your health? We are joined by Dimitri Kirif, Assistant Professor of Biomedical Engineering at University of Massachusetts Amherst, who is developing biosensor tattoos. Professor Kirif, thank you for joining us today. Great being here. Thank you for inviting me here, Nate. Thank you. So I'd like to start with a little bit of the background, but I think we need to open the topic with setting up what are bioelectronics and how did you get interested in them? Yeah, so that's actually a two-part question, and I do have a story about how <laughs> I got into that. So bioelectronics, you know, it's it's a very exciting subfield, and it's a multidisciplinary field of science, I would call it. It's not exactly independent as, you know, electrical engineering or biomedical engineering, but it really is between the fields, and it really is between electrical, biomedical, material science, neuroscience, and neuroelectronics. It's really this combination of these fields, and it is about creating or about measuring electrical signals that are corresponding to biological processes, you know, inside of human organism, inside of body, inside of a cell, DNA, or, you know, or your brain, of course. There are a lot of examples of what, you know, one might call bioelectronics. I mean, if you look around, just look at yourself in the mirror, right? So a lot of, of your human body is bioelectronic, right? So brain, heart, uh, nervous system, you know, brain is a part of central nervous system, spinal cord, or your nervous system is your peripheral nervous system, autonomic nervous system, but then, you know, moving forward, the heart and cardiovascular system, it's all electronic. But then, you know, muscle activity, ocular activity, speech, cardiovascular, endocrine system, sweat, you could kind of connect all of that to bioelectronics and much more. So it's, it's, it, this is really just scratching the surface. To get to the second part of your question, how I got into that, that's actually a, a somewhat long story. But to put it shortly, I have started my academic career and my undergraduate was in quantum physics. I was doing something completely opposite for my undergraduate for one of my masters. So it was nanoelectronics. And then I was at a small conference. And at the time I was working on, you know, electric engineering transistors. And they saw a poster when they had a graphene transistor and they had a neuronal cell on it and they measured the electrical activity of that neuronal cell and I was like that's something I want to do with my life that's something I want to put my electrical engineering background to translating that into you know all the biomedical field and that's how I pretty much moved into bioelectronics. Now, you mentioned graphene there, and that's one of the objects that kind of comes into play with your work here. So can you tell the greater public, I guess, what is graphene? Right. So graphene is, you might have heard as well, this, this term of two-dimensional material. So it is atomically thin material. It's like, imagine you have pieces of paper, right? So these are all single atoms. And you might have a graphite that's, uh, you know, in a piece of pencil, that's that's the graphite. You take one atom, think of that layer, so it's just literally one atom thin. This is graphene. For a while, it has been theoretically predicted that, you know, one atom thick material just cannot exist, but it has been proven experimentally opposite, so it can exist. And it opens up a lot of fundam interesting fundamental physics in there because you can find all of these electrical conductors in a single plane they can just they can only move in, in in these two dimensions and that's why you know graphene and all other 2d materials have been amazing for physics initially and that's why you know like for the first since the discovery in 2010 experimental discovery it was mainly physics that was benefiting from the graphene and all the 2d materials discovery but over the time, it has been really, we, we realized that there is a lot of properties of this 2D material, specifically graphene, that makes a lot of sense for interactions with the human body and with biological tissue. What is it about the graphene that makes it so it can conduct so well? 
It is the electronic properties, the, the, this combination of atomic distribution of the material that makes this unique sense. But then it's also, it's not only about conductivity itself, it's about sensitivity to external field, to, to the surroundings. Imagine you have, you know, I have this example, you have something hot, let's say you're cooking, right? You put your hand on and you kind of, you try to sense something, you would only sense with one side of your hand, right? Because it's thick, it's not one other. You, you don't sense anything with the opposite side of your hand. But if your hand was one atom thick, you would sense it, you know, much better, faster, you know, with, with a greater level of sensitivity. And that is the case with graphene and 2D materials. All of these atoms, the whole surface is exposed to the surroundings that makes it amazing sensor. You've developed now or are developing a graphene tattoo health monitor. So what is this? What are you making? What will it be able to do? These are uh, very unique systems. They've actually been developed uh, initially at uh, UT Austin, sponsored by NSF and my postdoc advisor at the time. These are one atom thick graphene supported by a small, very thin layer of polymer, PMME, a very classical polymer. That is then placed on a tattoo paper. We cut it into small pieces. You put it in water, you know, like like with the uh, temporary tattoo within the childhood. You just soak it in water. You put it on skin. You transfer it. Uh, and let's say you apply a little bit of pressure. You apply a little bit more water. You remove it. The paper comes off, but then the graphene tattoo stays on the skin. And it is optically transparent. It is strong. It is elastic. It is soft. It is electrically conductive. It is bicompatible. Nobody ever complained about all oh, the bicompatibility issue. So it, it stays on the skin and it forms electrical interface. That means we can use it to record all these bioelectronic systems, bioelectronic signals that we just discussed. How does it work? Is there anything that's built into it to connect it to devices? Like I'm thinking about like with an EKG or something, you have more of a sticker thing that's hooked up to wires that goes to a machine. Is this similar and just using kind of a different interface? It is somewhat similar. Uh, of course, we try to, you know, the whole interface is a little bit more intricate. It's thinner, softer. If we even compare it to the state of the art, and you mentioned those, like these gel electrodes, they just kind of, you, you adhere, they, you put them on skin, they, they adhere well. And then there are some kind of clips or wires to connect to. So they work, right? But then they have been working, but they, you know, they irritate your skin. They're not exactly stable. Yeah. You could use other kind of, you know, maybe some kind of fans, but they move around. These graphene tattoos, when we place them on skin, they really stay on that exact location. You just put them on, they stay there, they don't move, they don't shift from that from that location. And it's, this is really the key for a lot of applications. And they come, they come with perfect interface with the skin, with all this micro curvature of the skin, because if you look in the skin, it's not really flat, right? It's not really perfect. It has all the micro curvature, and it's really important that the interface, the material that we put on, goes into this intricate contact with the skin. I'm imagining it might have a longer lifespan being attached to the skin than a traditional one like we were talking about. Definitely, yes. Well, currently, you know, we are, you know, we, we have a few days of a lifespan. We could protect it for a longer term with some spray coating, with some extra coating materials to make a uh, a longer lifetime if that's if that's needed. Very cool. So what are some of the potential applications? Like what might this be used for in the future? From something very simple as, you know, a simple, I, I call it direct electric physiology. Let's say you can put it on, on your forehead and you can measure brain activity, so-called electroencephalogram or EEG. You can put it around your heart, like on the chest or, you know, just on, on, on both of your arms. And you can measure heart activity, electrocardiogram, ECG. You can measure your heart rate. You can put it on an arm and kind of measure your muscle activity. And there is uh, a very important translation to all the human machine and uh, interaction to measure this EMG for people with, uh, uh, for amputees and people with uh, some kind of prosthetics. One very cool study that we've done, actually, we'll place these tattoos around the eyes. Let's say top, bottom, left, and right of the eyes. Usually, you know, when you look any direction, there is a depolarization and repolarization of your retina and cornea happens. So there is electrical signal that is distinguishable whether you look to left, whichever direction. 
And then this signal can be recorded with the tattoos, you know, placed on the face. And they could be true. This, we actually have done this. This signal is then translated into a drone that flies into the direction where you look. <laughs> so this is, uh, this, this, this stuff can be done. Then the most latest work I've done and the most, you know, um, complicated, you know, biomedically, uh, was measuring blood pressure in a continuous cuffless manner, just using graphene tattoos without any cuff, measuring blood pressure in a continuous manner. Are there challenges when you're designing it to be used for different applications like that? Or is it more what you're doing with the data or how you're analyzing the results? There are, of course, challenges related to the material and the process and how we make what we do and how we work with the material, with, with the device and with the tattoos. And there are, of course, challenges, as you mentioned, related to the data. When it comes to the blood pressure monitoring, so there is, of course, the challenge was that, you know, one could have done this blood pressure monitoring using bioimpedance by placing an array of devices over wrist, you know, using a wristband. Right? Let's say you could have a wristband with electrodes over here. The challenge with data here is that this monitoring, this measurement is not direct. It's not that you measure directly values of millimeters of mercury, that what blood pressure is, right? We measure bioimpedance and then correlate it to blood pressure. But now, the moment your wristband moves by one millimeter, this correlation is gone. And that's where tattoos shine. Because we place them right on the skin, they stay on that exact location. We can train our system once and it works uh, for the duration of as long as this tattoo stay. Now to the challenge of designing the tattoos and you know, making sure of the, you know, they perform well. There is, of course, and there has been, this is, this is one challenge that we've actually solved that previously, you know, when we've started, we would build, let's say, 10 hundred of those tattoos, and then one would work great, another would just not work well. It would, it would be, the performance would be 10 times worse. And the problem is, is, this, is the problem of 2D material, right? It, it's atomically thin. So if you have a small crack, a small problem with the property of the material in, in a single plane, the whole performance of the whole tattoo, the whole electrode diminishes. What we've done actually is, is, is very simple. We're just stacking two monolayers on top of another. So all of the tattoos that we have right now, they have two monolayers of graphene, which doesn't really increase the thickness. It increased the thickness by less than, a, like let's say by three angstroms, by half a million nanometer, but it improves the performance drastically. It's interesting because we've seen some similar things over the last decade or so, probably, that it's much more of a traditional looking computer chip on some sort of substrate. And really, you're just bypassing that whole design. Yes. You know? Yeah, exactly. As it was being developed, were there challenges kind of figuring out how to make it work? The main challenge in using these tattoos for blood pressure, this was my uh, part of my postdoc work was about reproducibility and that was that was that was the, the 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 problem that we've solved interconnects is probably still remaining a challenge but it's it's an engineering challenge i would imagine you might have seen the image and uh you know as i mentioned it, it comes right with this perfect interface with the skin but how do you read out from yeah. that right the rest of the electronics is still hard and rigid right we still have some kind of chips and some kind of wires and interconnects to it and that is a source of noise. That is a source of, you know, movement artifacts. We have a solution right now that works in a while, in, in a lab, creating a solution that works in the wild, that works in, in, at home and on-demand solution. That is something we're still working on. And that's an engineering challenge. And I'm, I have no doubt that it's solvable. So I wanted to ask you, you've, you've had a couple NSF awards at this point. You had an eager award that is funding this work right now. Can you talk about what that kind of support means to you as a researcher? So this, this eager award, thank you for bringing it up. This is actually on, on something I haven't touched much. So this, it's not only about graphene tattoos. It is actually about taking the graphene tattoos platform and, you know, eager platform is eager specifically is about let's say blue sky, somewhat crazy ideas. And the idea was to actually use these tattoos as sweat biosensors, not only as pure electrical measurement sensors, but as sweat biosensors. And this project is really a combination of two technologies, two key technologies. One that we know, 
one that we know that graphene, we can functionalize graphene with, let's say, antibodies, so optimaries and can make biosensors. This was a side job, side project that we've been always working on, and there is a lot of people work on. We know that graphene makes excellent biosensor and we can functionalize it. But now, how can we make a sweat biosensor besides, you know, there are a lot, of course, other competitor uh, three electrode sweat biosensors that are there on the market. What we thought, skin is electrolyte. Is it in a way, right? It's dry, right? So it's not really electrolyte. But we imagined that we can put the graphene on the skin and instead of using it as an electrode, as it's mainly done with all this electrophysiological measurement, we would put two connections, source and drain, as you would do to a transistor. And then the gate would be applied through the skin, through the human body. It was a little bit wild, but we started with portion skin before, of course, and moved into human skin, but it works. We can actually apply field effect to the graphene channel that's placed on the skin through the body. We, we can have this perfect V-shaped transfer curve of a graphene transistor. So that means we can actually combine a graphene transistor biosensor that we placed on skin and use it as a biosensor. So this was a crazy idea that you know we proposed to NSF and luckily was funded uh, through the biosensing division. It really means a lot. Now I just need to work with the students and make sure that it's doable, make sure that now we can actually deliver this red biosensing ability of these tattoos. What's the most exciting part of the work for you? Is it coming up with ideas like that or is it overcoming challenges as you're developing something? Well, I think it, it's 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 a little bit of both. And uh, this 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 trio and like the, the developing these ideas is is one part of the job, right? And that's I think partially why I was interested in in, in being an academia and becoming a professor, just you know, always, you know, dreaming these crazy ideas and but then of course, that's one part and just, you know, making them work on a piece of paper, but now actually delivering them and actually delivering them as a proof of concept. That's the second part of the three. Like, yes, it works. But now what really motivates me and, and uh, for the last few years is being able to deliver these technologies to the human beings, to the hospitals, to, you know, on-demand at-home use. That's really something I am personally motivated. To not only make these technologies that, you know, just work in the lab and look, look it, it works, right? But to actually make these technologies that we can translate, that we can deliver to the people that they can use. Special thanks to Dmitry Kiriev. For the Discovery Files, I'm Nate Podker. You can watch a video version of this conversation on our YouTube and Roku channels by searching at NSF Science. Please subscribe wherever you get podcasts. And if you like our program, share with a friend and consider leaving a review. Discover how the U.S. National Science Foundation is advancing research at NSF.gov.